Good evening, everyone. I'm going to call this meeting to order of the City of Montpelier Development Review Board. My name is Daniel Richardson. I serve as chair, and the other members from my right are Rob Goodwin, Kevin O'Connell, Deb Markowitz, Meredith Crandall, staff, Tom Kester, Ryan Kane, Clay Rock. All right. Uh, the first item of business is the approval of the agenda. If you've had an opportunity to review it, I don't know if anyone has any amendments or wishes to make a motion to approve the agenda as printed. Uh, Mr. Chair, I make a, uh, a motion to approve the agenda for this evening's meeting. Okay, motion by Kevin. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Rob. All those in favor of approving the agenda as printed, please raise your right hand. We have an agenda. There are no comments from the chair this evening other than uh, I will address the process for the last item that we have, which is 100 State Street, which is a sketch plan review this evening, which comes with its own particular set of procedure, and I'll, I'll explain because I presume people are either, a number of people I think are here for that application, and a number may be arriving after that. But let's, uh, let's move forward. The first item uh, is approval of the minutes. There's the September 4th. I was there. Kevin, Kate is not present, but Deb and Tom and Rob. So we have a quorum. Does anybody have a motion for the September 4th minutes? A motion to approve the minutes from September 4th. Okay, motion by Rob. Do I have a S second? Second by Tom. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor who are eligible to vote on the September 4th minutes, please raise your right hand. And we have September 4th minutes approved. Uh, the September 17th minutes cannot be approved because we lack a quorum to do so, so we will put those off to the next meeting. That brings us to the first item of business for this evening, which is two Moonlight Terrace. terrace. Uh, the owner applicant is Stephen Kirby and Kathleen Newbrow. Please, please come forward to the table. So what I'll, um, I have some you have some landscape drawings. Okay. Uh, supposed to be distributed. Why don't you just go ahead and distribute those, and then we'll have you introduce yourself and put you under oath. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, if you'll just state your name for the record, state your names for the record. Steve Kirby. Kathy Newbro. Okay, if you'll raise your right hand, do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give for the matter under consideration shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under the pains and penalties of perjury? I do. So, why don't you just give us a brief description of what you're seeking? Um, and then I'll have Meredith give uh, a further description and we'll uh, start with the questions. Okay, yeah. Well, we're buying a property at Two Moonlight Terrace um, <clears throat> and we're hoping to get approval to convert the existing office space on the first floor to two um, apartments. Uh, there's an existing apartment already on the second floor. And uh, so we'd like to remodel a little bit and uh, put in some firewalls and so forth and, and uh, get approval for that for that use okay um, we've talked with Chris Boyd to a lot of extent had to visit the site you know what have a pretty good feel for what he wants to see done to make that happen okay so this is just a conversion from an office to two one-bedroom apartments right and then uh, are there uh, I know that part of the application is changing the parking uh, area. Apart from that, however, are there any other proposed changes to the exterior of the building? I understand, obviously, interior, you may be doing some changes, but we're, on the DRB, we're concerned primarily with the external. Yeah, well, um, since you brought that up, I meant to mention it, is that I, we've decided to decline the request to move the parking area in okay. any way and change it in any way. We're going to leave it as is. Cause it's Seems more like, involved than we guessed yeah <laughs> so. yeah yeah these these bylaws can have those surprises um 
and so so there's no request to change the parking area um, it's just strictly a change of use that's correct nothing right. about the external is going to change entrances exits pedestrian circulation well entrances yes we, we would like to put in a new entrance as the drawing shows okay. um, on the uh, north side of the building so and that will allow each apartment to have their own uh, means of egress without sharing that means with any other tenants so when you converted everything it'll be just a residential that's at that point no more office Correct. that's right yeah okay meredith um it might be helpful um i know the staff had written up a number of reports about the setbacks with the parking but given the applicants shift in position to keep the parking area as is could you highlight what issues um you believe are still relevant for us to discuss yep give me one second to make sure i've checked everything off that does no longer pertains um so we still need to deal with landscaping mm -hmm. and then other than that um it would be if you felt like asking about it and you don't have to you can ask about bicycle access and storage under right. section 3202 on page nine and then it's really just landscaping i mean the the main reason that this application is here is because it's conditional use to go strictly residential um and then the you know if if the landscaping landscaping exemptions waivers okay. are things that i can approve thank you um so let's dive in to the landscaping question i know you have circulated if you could explain what's on the landscaping proposal um, and what you're proposing yeah um well it's pretty well um populated already with trees certainly a lot of mature trees and many many saplings which are pretty much outline the perimeter of the property um, there's um, shrubs as well um, they're kind of um, mixed within the saplings on the edges of the trees around the perimeter um, with the exception of the hydrangeas um, that are near the entrance of apartment two and uh, some lilacs and honeysuckles Um, on the north side, or excuse me, on the south side of the building. Um, there's, there's quite a bit there now. Um, there's, densely vegetated. I think it's densely vegetated, yeah. Um, so are you proposing any new um, landscaping? Let me start there. Um, I'm not proposing any, unless the board feels that it's necessary. We would comply. Well, I'm, I'm noting, so just under uh, 3203G talks about the standards for landscaping, and it's the every five feet of building perimeter that requires one shrub, and for every 30 feet of exterior perimeter, one tree. But that gets, you, you, you have the opportunity to count your existing trees. So yeah. according to the staff's calculation, and unless you have a reason to dispute this and say, no, it's a much smaller building, the staff has calculated this uh, roughly 172 feet of principal building exterior when they measure all around, which translates out to about 34 shrubs and five trees. So I, I, I think based on this, and uh, um, the drawing you gave us shows in green the existing trees. That's right. And shrubs. Yeah. Sorry if I clarified That's okay. that. Yeah. Uh, and you have a count. So you're, you have approximately 25 to 30 trees and 20 to 25 shrubs yeah so the proposal would be that if you add them up so if you have you know just taking your low numbers 25 trees and 20 shrubs that's 45 that's still roughly um about six more than you're required to if you count if you add up the trees and trees and shrubs you're just more evenly divided between trees and shrubs than subsection d g would require you is that correct yeah, I think there's a lot of saplings as well that I didn't even include because, um, well, there there's must be 30 to 50 saplings, you know, trees of 
10, 15 feet height that are scattered all throughout yeah. along the perimeter. But yes, yeah, you're right. Any questions from the board about the trees? I think that's pretty, pretty adequate um, testimony. Uh, let's ask about the the bicycle storage. Um, is there any? We simply ask. We're not. Re it's not a requirement. But are there any bicycle storage areas or opportunities if tenants have bikes if they commute by bike to store? There's a lot of trees to change. <laughs> <laughs> There's no uh, formal bike racks, is that what you're asking? But well, or, or even are there... they'd storm in their apartments, or... Are there room in the apartments to do so? Um, yeah, well... I think certainly in apartment two at the bottom of the stairs, there's plenty of room. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, apartment one also has a mudroom. I'm sorry, apartment three, our proposed apartment three. Um, has a mudroom entrance there, and that has room for a bicycle there. And the only one question would might be apartment two, where there might be less room for a bike stored inside. But, but, uh, but it's a you know fairly 900 square foot apartment, so right tenants get creative; they'll find a place if they want to. But there's no garage or shed for. Okay. There is well no, not for their use. There is right. a garage, for their use. but the right. fire. Marshall has advised us to not allow access because it's not sheetrocked properly. So, right. so for now, we won't allow access to the garage. Well, and we're not going to, I don't, okay. Um, and there's no plans to put in a bike rack or in. No. Okay. Well, let me ask this. If, if a tenant asked for one, would you be amenable to such a thing? Yeah, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I mean, good. where does one get a bike rack? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. We've always <laughs> <laughs> um, any other questions on bike racks? All right. We do have to take affirmative evidence on the conditional use standards. Uh, and this is more um, along the lines because there's two types of allowable use. There's permitted uses, which are just simply uses that are allowed without question. And then there are conditional uses in which we have to make an examination to make sure the use you're proposing is not inconsistent with the area. Um, so one, the first one talks about the capacity of community facilities and utilities and says the applicant shall demonstrate that the proposed development shall not cause a disproportionate or unreasonable burden on the city's ability to provide community facilities and utilities, including local schools, police, fire protection and ambulance service, street infrastructure, and maintenance, parks and recreation facilities, water supply, sewage disposal, and stormwater systems inf infrastructure. Uh, so this is an existing building. It already is occupied during the day as an office use. You're simply looking to convert it to residential use, not changing the footprint. You'll be adding sinks. Is that correct? Not technically. Okay. It was a doctor's office, so there's a lot of sinks already. Yeah. There's, um, there's three total now, and there will be three when we're done. Is this on city sewer and water? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, and so you've already spoken with the Department of Public Works about changing. Yeah, an indirect connection and having an engineer mm -hmm. make sure it's, you know, you know, would fit the engineering. Sure. Index. Yeah, uh, that would be in process if we're approved. Or um, and so there are two one-bedroom apartments as well in here. So it, it, we're not talking about uh, a huge number of tenants coming into the the site either. At most, two occupants of one-bedroom apartments, whether that's a small family or uh, single person. Yeah. Um, so I, I think the evidence is that there's no impact on the schools. Um, you're not changing the driveway, and uh, have you talked to the Department of Public Works as far as the width of the driveway? Is it sufficient for ambulance and police oh, to enter? Um, no, we're assuming since there is an existing 
part okay. of a two-bedroom apartment already and that it's in compliance. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And that's be, and be also because they're not making any changes as it is, and with that much room to turn around in, Department of Public Works didn't have any co concerns about that issue. Uh, no impact on street or infrastructure because there's no changes being proposed. Um, maybe someone who lives there will use our parks and recreation facilities, which is a good thing. Um, and we've already talked about water. So the next section talks about traffic. The applicant shall demonstrate the proposed development will not have an undue adverse upon traffic in the area, including volume type and tra timing. Traffic generated by the proposed development shall not unreasonably and disproportionately contribute to reduced level of service for affected streets. That the reasonable measures have been taken to minimize or mitigate the amount of vehicular traffic generated by proposed development. Um, so your testimony was that the apartments two and three, what are going to become apartments two and three, were a doctor's office, saw regular visits during the day, multiple trips, and this would reduce down to essentially two residential units. Seems, seems that way. Seems okay. logical. Yeah. Hearing no further questions on traffic, um, I think that the evidence shows that it's likely to have no impact to very little impact. Um, the character of the neighborhood standards, the applicant shall demonstrate the proposed development shall not have an undue adverse effect upon the character of the neighborhood. So in this, um, if you could just describe, this parcel sits along River Street in 302. Are there other residential uses in the immediate area? On Moonlight Terrace. Moonlight Terrace right. is, yeah. is all residential. Yeah. Okay. Um, I know 302 itself is more of a commercial corridor, but uh, along Moonlight Terrace there are other residential yeah. properties. And Moonlight Terrace, the property and the building set back quite a ways from River Street, so it, it really feels like part of that residential neighborhood already, rather than the commercial part. Does this property sit up on yeah. a hill? Okay, it does, so it's yeah. it's lifted literally up off of River Street. Yeah, right. Okay. It doesn't uh, have a line of sight even to River Street, really. The next one is yards, lot coverage, and landscaping. New development shall maintain a sense of open space as appropriate to the neighborhood by balancing the size of the building footprint um, with the mass and structure and size of lot. This isn't applicable because you're not proposing any changes to the exterior. Uh, the last one is performance standards. I have a question. Uh, yes. On the exterior, are you going to be putting in a new entrance for the apartment two on the exterior of the building? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So that would go underneath. Is there like an existing exterior stairwell? Yeah, that's yeah. right. Be a there, new, there will be a new entrance on the exterior of the building. Yes. Yeah. And there'll be no lighting for that. Oh, there'll be lighting. Door. There will because it's required by the National Electrical Code to do so. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Any further questions on the exterior? Uh, hearing none, so we have the uh, yard, lot coverage, and landscaping. New development shall maintain this. I'm sorry, we're down to performance standards. Um, the board may impose conditions deemed necessary to further the purpose of Chapter 330, including performance standards um, on uh, the project, whether the project is expected to contribute any of the following to the neighborhood, noise, glare, odors, vibration, electrical or radio interference, waste storage needs, particulate matter or airborne solids or flammable, toxic, or hazardous substances or waste. Are any of these things likely to be triggered by your change of use? We would so. work hard to avoid those. <laughs> okay. It might be something good to put in a lease, actually. <laughs> <laughs> those are always good terms to put in a lease. No, yeah. no toxic yeah. substance. Don't bring them. Um, but apart from that, um, I think the evidence is pretty clear that this is um, a residential use. Uh, will there be a plan for regular trash pickup um, provided by you, the landlord, as opposed to the tenant, or? Yes. Okay. That's, that's how it's currently operating, so we'll just continue that service. Okay. Um, again, the evidence is that this is in a residential neighborhood, and this is consistent with that. Uh, none of these uses seem to be, I mean, you can have noisy tenants, but the use in and of itself is not generating unusual amounts of noise. Um, so given that, what's the pleasure of the board? Is there any more questions about the application? Um, or, well, 
Yes, Claire. I had a, a clarifying question. You mentioned, so will you need a water wastewater amendment for the we, cities? Will you have an engineer certify that the, the building will Supply they, lines are supply adequate. lines are adequate and so forth for the system that Montpelier has, um, and once that's submitted, I think that's how that works by the engineer. Um, the city will review that and give us the, that permitting uh, to, for an indirect connection okay. if, if that's suitable for their for they see. But it has to be an engineer that sends a letter to the to my understanding, and we'll forward with that right away any further questions from the board if not I'll entertain a motion I, I'll move to uh, to approve um, the conditional use and uh, and is there still a minor site plan change or is that now no longer part of this um, it's, it's site it's still plan. Part of it. Site plan is still yeah. part of it. Okay. Um, so minor site plan and conditional use. Okay. Um, with a friendly amendment, with the modification of the applicants to remove the change of use part, a change of parking area. Yes. Thank okay. you. Motion by Deb. Do I have a second? Second. Second by Kevin. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor of the motion as proposed, please raise your right hand. Congratulations, you have your permit. Um, it will issue well. It will. We used to say we used to say that all the time. It will issue. I, I liked that you said it. <laughs> cool. um, it. It will issue by paper. With usually we're pretty good within a week uh, or two weeks of this meeting. You'll have a written decision, but you have our vote. Know that it's forthcoming with the findings that we've made. Okay. And there's a window for appeal. Right. 30 days 30 from days. issuance of the decision. Yeah. And that'll, um, that'll be all explained in the packet yeah. that gets sent yeah. to you along with the Z notice that you'll need to post on the property. If, if there was an appeal, just curious, if there was an appeal, um, the, the appellant, how would they um, bring their case forward? I mean, and not it, how would they, but... They have to file their notice they have have with... A re reason, what would their reasons have to be for it being denied and that sort of thing? Well, I mean, there's a number. This is, gets into a, a legal... Yeah. question um, but generally what happens is in, if somebody chooses to appeal they file a notice of appeal either with the city um, and or with the environmental court you have to go in front of the environmental court and say why you're appealing um, and that process works out strictly in front of the environmental court oh, okay. um, and so you know there's limited not everyone can appeal um, a decision it's they have to be an interested party, and that's defined by the statute, um, and that has some particular requirements to it. Um, okay. yeah. I think it's a sign that no one is here wishing to speak about this application. It clearly isn't the most controversial thing right. that's yeah. happened this month. Yeah. Um, okay. It is a legal requirement that somebody who want, wishes to appeal have participated before uh, this board oh. as well. Oh, Just, oh, well, that's good. Yeah. So. Okay. Great. Good. Yeah. Well, good luck. Thanks much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Right. Uh, moving along, our next application is 47 Court Street. Thank you. If you would state your name for the record, please. Uh, Yana Walder. Okay. And uh, are you appearing on behalf of... Uh, uh, Capital City Partners. Okay. So if you raise your right hand, we'll swear you in. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the evidence and testimony you're about to give for the matter under consideration shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under a pains and penalties of perjury? Yes. All right. Um, please give us an introduction as to your application. Um, so we are looking to replace the existing jersey barriers in the parking lot with just a more decorative stone wall. Pretty easy. That's it. Yes. 
no change in uh, uh, the, the, the slope or anything. It's just a, a simple switch it out and put it in. Yes. In the material. Yep. Um, where are the Jersey barriers located? Just so there's a picture. Sure I mean, some. I see two of them in the picture. Two. Um, yep, there's three. Okay. So. so, so three Jersey barriers along. Is this the the back side of the building? Yes. And and if I look to the left, where the uh, looks like the uh, CRV is parked mm -hmm. on this picture. Um, so we're not touching those. You're not touching those big no. blocks. So Meredith, is this technically a steep slope behind these? E this does not look like. Um, if you take a look at, there's a couple of pictures. So if you, I mean, <coughs> one, if you look at what Yana just recently handed out, mm -hmm. um, this is off of the steep slope map. It's a steep slope slopes overlay. Um, and so it's, I mean, technically, where they are is the slope, um, and you know, there's, there's, and that's one of the steepest parts of the slope. There's going to be some impact on that slope. Yeah, but if I'm it's, looking, if I'm looking here at this picture, it looks like it was taken in winter without the leaves on the trees. Uh, I mean, that does not look yeah. like. But if you look, well, I know, but. I mean, I, just the slope behind it? I'm just looking at the slope behind it. I mean, mm -hmm. obviously, the, the, the wall itself um, has a vertical, uh, very steep mm -hmm. slope, but the, the slope it's supporting or that it's, it's holding up, I just want to be clear, it's not steep uh, under our definition, so, or at least it's not a, a greater than the 30%. Um, I mean, even I think even I think that's right. Okay. Hold on. It's just one of those. If you take a look at, the thing is, I don't think the whole Jersey barrier is this whole aspect here, mm -hmm. and that's what reads as a steep slope on there. It's not like we have a, a, a full engineering report on this because it seemed a bit excessive. Sure. To get a full engineering report on replacing those Jersey barriers, because I agree, part of part of what reads as the slope is the actual Jersey barriers themselves. Right. And which is the steepest part, right there. And maybe I'm, I'm odd. I'm simply trying to, to, for I think for purpose of just trying to understand and, and narrow what we have to do. Mm -hmm. if, if we're really just talking about the steep slope as created by the Jersey barrier in and of itself. I think that's a different task for us to tackle. Than, Agreed. Than the the slope behind it. Um, and this is this is really the key issue for our review, right? This three. Yeah. So. Yep. No, the key issue is this is the slope. So that's why this is here. Um, because unfortunately, technically, it reads as a steep slope. So this is technically. Issue, but not maybe actually. Correct. <laughs> it's it's where my my ability as zoning administrator to you know use judgment is reined in. I'm I'm interested in um, the the letter that we received from the neighbor uh, mm -hmm. that relates to this a little bit, where the neighbor indicates that she's really thinks it'll be an improvement to have wall, but has some requested that we think about um, uh, the, the grade. Mm -hmm. um, and I believe that neighbor is here today, Mr. Bluen, if when you're ready to, to enter into that part of public mm -hmm. testimony. Okay. So it might and be. That's great. We can wait there. And so I'm interested in knowing, um, I don't understand enough about the bylaws so we have the flexibility to do to respond to this way or do we really just have flexibility to do? Um, oh yes I'm sorry 
So um, to say that again, it's, right. it's uh, I'm not clear if we have flexibility to do what's being asked even uh, by the neighbor. And so uh, I'd, I'd love some advice on that. Well, when this, the time comes in the yep. discussion. Well, for the scope here, because at this point, the entire application has to come before the development review board. Yes. Um, everything within the minor site plan review process is we get a fresh open. Look at. To, yeah, is open for you to look at. I have pointed out, you know, in the staff report, where and how I think this all complies, and I think, and mm -hmm. you know, you can all read that and take new evidence here. Correct, Dan. That's your read we, as well. Yeah, we can we can take evidence as well as uh, and you know what I was really aiming to get the board to f to focus on is that you know if if there seems to be a couple parts to this application. One is that they're n they're proposing in the nature of the application not to change the existing slope mm -hmm. behind the wall that it stays the same. So, do we have to make a representation a condition? That gets into our discretion. Um, in general, you don't have to because that's the scope of the application. It, you know, it's like saying somebody wants to build a Dunkin' Donuts, and you say, "Okay, but don't don't process asbestos in that Dunkin' Donuts." And they say, "We're not asking to do that," and you don't have to make that condition. It's just inherent in the application itself. Mm -hmm. um, at the same time, if there is concern. I think given the steep slope, you know, even to the extent that this is not a greater than 30 percent steep slope, it's a lesser than, and we can have that requirement for the purposes of erosion. Now, Mr. Blauen's interest in preserving the slope may be different as far as the way water runs off of his property and those private rights to have water flow off the property in a certain way. That's not necessarily in our, our jurisdiction. Um, here, but we can certainly, to the extent that we have any concerns or receive testimony on e uh, erosion issues, which is ultimately what the steep slope provisions are intended to protect, um, we can make conditions off of that if that's helpful. Um, so I think uh, as a preliminary question for the board is, um, is one of, you know, do we determine that, and if we look at section 3007 uh, of what a steep slope is, does that necessarily include a retaining wall, which is always going to be greater than 30% because walls tend to be vertical? Um, or is that something where we would determine it not to be. And if it is to be determined to be a steep slope and covered by 3007, is this something where the board feels there's more testimony needed as to what's being proposed? I mean, I think it's a very straightforward application. Mr. Yes. May I? Mr. Chair, I, I, I think the board has a opportunity here to show some common sense with regards to the uh, the new zoning regulations. We are simply swapping out one material for a new material. And as long as we make sure that the engineering components are compliant with good engineering practices, I think I would steer clear of, of getting into the slope issue at all. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's an engineering issue, and I think we should be attentive to that. But as far as trying to parse I mean, just the, the thought of, of taking every every retaining wall we have in town and saying, oh my gosh, you're all over 30%. And that every time you make an improvement or a repair, you'd have to go jump through those kinds of hoops. I, I just uh, would like to evaluate on the merits, not on, on something fictional. Rob? I just have one question to, I think, come to the same conclusion in that is the elevation of the top of that wall going to be the same when it's when the con new construction is completed as it currently exists? So I think it'll be three feet tall because I think the blocks are a foot high. So it's half a foot taller, but we are flexible. So there will be a reduction in uh, no, slope. I think a half a foot taller. Right now it's two point 
five feet tall? You, you answer my question and thank you. Okay. Yeah, so the, the slope behind it will actually be less of a, uh, uh, it, it'll be less of a slope. It'll be closer to even because you're, you're okay. raising the bottom okay. a little bit. What's the what's the pleasure of the board, rest of the board? I think there's yes, Claire. I, I had a, a question. You're just talking about replacing yeah. these one, two, three, four, correct? Mm -hmm. And then is is this the neighboring? That's my problem. Right here. So your concern would be if they did something here, what would come off here would come over into. We'll give Mr. Blau an, an opportunity. I know he'll, he'll want to testify. But I, I want to touch upon this threshold question because I think it shapes our questions for Mr. Blau and, or for the applicant as well as their testimony, you know, if we're looking at it as a steep slope. I, I, I tend to agree with both Kevin and Rob that, you know, if I don't think the intent of this, while it doesn't necessarily define slopes um, in there, there's an indication by the language used that this is really talking about naturally occurring slopes or man-made material slopes that are not the retaining walls um, because that's inherent within retaining wall is that it's always going to be greater than 30 percent and the whole purpose of retaining wall you, you know you need to be able to maintain it I mean, if this Jersey, Jersey barrier, if it wasn't an aesthetic issue, but it was some structural issue where it was undermining, the idea that the bylaws wouldn't allow you to repair that because clearly at some point it was necessary to hold this back, I don't think would, would not come, it would be an irrational application of the rules. I'm that makes sense. With that. Okay. Yeah. Good with that. So, Mr. Blauen, I think it, if you wish to testify or have anything you wish to offer, please. Uh, the microphone right there is, and just introduce yourself for the record. Thank you. <coughs> My name is Jim Bluen. I'm the owner of 45 Court Street. Um, and I met with Yana at the site, and we discussed uh, my concerns, which are the grade. Um, there is very little property to speak of between our two properties. Um, the stones that you'll see that are placed on the grass, which is part of my property, have been put there to prevent plowing from that property of ending up in our walkway down below. The column that you see on the back side of the house was taken out by a plow individual several years back. Um, probably the most important aspect of this testimony is that that fourth barrier goes beyond the grass. That's my property. Now, I think this is, we've talked about this. I think it's wonderful they want to replace a Jersey barrier. But I'm petrified because I know that Yon is not going to be driving that excavator. Okay, somebody gets in there and stuff changes really quickly, and then it's done. If they can pull that barrier and put those new blocks on that existing grade, because I would bring you to another picture that looks like this, it shows you that this grade from this point to this point is quite steep. So. I'm all ears about how high this is going to be, but it really needs to be stipulated that it comes off this grade, not this grade. And if it does, I'm okay with that, as long as there is a flat, flush face that cuts back into their space. So anything that they plow or any rain that comes down continues to move in the direction it's moved for years. Okay. That's all. And I just, I want it to go down as saying that as long as they put that replacement wall exactly where that one is and don't touch any of the dirt to the right, I, I'm in favor of their proposal. Okay. Um, but I'm petrified. I have to say that the previous owners of this building said the same thing. Those block walls that you were looking at, that you didn't want her to move, they moved them. No permission. It was a field stone wall. So I get a little nervous and now I show up. I'm glad that she showed up. We've had a great conversation, but I want everybody in the loop. So if that wall drops 18 inches and then is 26 or 25 inches up, that it dropped. The grade dropped with it, and the water's going to move. I only know that because I've been there for 33 years. Thank you for your time. I appreciate their efforts. Thank you. Okay. 
Ms. Walters, uh, I think there's two questions that are raised um, by Mr. Uh, is it Bluen? Bluen. Bluen. Bluen's testimony. Uh, uh, one is, if you look at the picture, that looks like there's a little bit of a rise to the actual jer bottom of the Jersey barrier from the pavement. Um, so is the retaining wall proposed to go in at the pavement level or at that slight rise? Um, so we haven't actually gotten that far, but there's, if you, I mean, do you really think that it rises that much? I was just there measuring the wall and it really doesn't rise that much. I mean, it looks like it because the Jersey barrier has um, like the widening at the bottom. So in the picture, it looks like there's a, you know, like a rise that goes like this, but it's pretty flat. You think it's about 18 inches to the bottom of the Jersey barrier? I, I mean, I don't sure think so. To, what? to the bottom of the Jersey barrier. I mean, it's covered in dirt because they're plowing and they push the dirt onto it, so it looks like a grade, but I really don't think it's that high off the. I, I was there when they like built that. And that was the reason why they did that, so that the plows wouldn't hit. They would have that dirt for the blades to rise up, strike the barriers, and they would know that they were at the end of what they could push to. Um, uh, so Bill Kehoe owned the building. He was the principal of, uh, of Associated General Contractors. I think it was Dubois and King that did this work. Um, and I, again, Mr. Flynn? Yeah, sorry. You want to just, just go to a microphone? If we're going to talk too much more. Sorry. I'll be quiet. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> we, just want, we just want to make sure it's on the record if you're talking. That's all. So, so there is no plan to drop it 18 inches. Okay. So, so essentially, you're talking about replacing it at the existing level. Yes. Um, and then um, on the, I think one of the concerns. Um, Thank you. On, um, see, this is the, I think on this picture, which looks like it was taken from underneath the deck. Uh, walkway area you know the Jersey barrier as as Jersey barriers are designed just simply ends mm -hmm. and um, is is there going to be an end piece on on the wall that you're proposing no um, basically so, just just an end of a stone block okay and is it going to extend past where the existing Jersey barrier is no and we're very flexible we can even shorten the wall it's it's not a we just think we're gonna die in just like it does now. Mm -hmm. okay. So I think the concern is what the water is going to end up over here by the stairs. My, my, I'll try to speak loudly with this picture. My honest concern is that an excavation blade goes here and goes down three and a half, four feet to remove this barrier. My property has been violated. I don't want that to happen. That barrier can be pulled and these blocks can be slid in and built up on top. It can die right into the exact space it is now. I'm not complaining about it. it went over. That was agreed two years ago. But it's just that this is how tight it is. Well, I think, I, I think that's really a, a, certainly you're expressing a, a private property interest that you're not giving permission for them to build onto your property or to dig onto your property. And so, that's less of our, our jurisdiction as a zoning board. You know, we can approve this wall and we can certainly, as I understand the representations are from the applicant, is that she's not seeking to expand the wall or proposing it tonight. Now, whether the excavators come and dig into your property and effectively <coughs> trespass, that's a little bit beyond the zoning and that's more in the private private property rights that you have because you're saying very clearly to the applicant, I don't give you permission, and I presume you're not going to change your mind. Um, and so, but that's not necessarily what we can put on as, as far as requirements for zoning. I mean, that's why I asked you to address the grade, because mm -hmm. I thought that that was in your purview. Well, and it's just nobody, what my concern was, was when an email came back and said, We don't plan to do this. Mm -hmm. The word, I don't plan to do things, doesn't hold so much water with me anymore. Again, she won't be the one running the excavator. 
I right. know what the plan is, but I've had plans before. And they don't always go the way we wanted them to. I want to be very clear that I came, I aired my concerns, and if the excavator does get a little aggressive, do all that, it sounds to me that tough, tough for me. Well, I, I, I believe don't, you know, doesn't your permit? I only know because the deck that you're walking under, I was forced to reduce by eight feet on both sides at another time by this board. Eight feet, I had to take off $18,000 because it exceeded the original plan. Mm -hmm. So I think you've got teeth to say, as long as it's done exactly the way we say, we agree. And if it doesn't happen the way we agree, then I have recourse. Or, I mean, I'm happy to build, you know, find out where the property line actually is and just build it up to it or not even touching the property line. That's I don't need to go serious. like all the way. Okay. Absolutely. Well, I, I would say as a practical matter, if we approve the plan as she's proposed it, and then she does something different on the property, then it's a violation, and you could bring a complaint. So you would have recourse, and then, uh, as the chair described, you also have private recourse. So a permit will be based on on her application, and and if she doesn't build it in accordance with that application our, and our approval then it's an enforcement matter. Yep. You can enforce that. Well, there's no, yes. absolutely, there's a procedure for enforcement. Um, we don't, you know, there's a, in the zoning administrator, there in the zoning office, there's an enforcement uh, mechanism. But then you also have the ability to, in, to have a private, to, to mm -hmm. have a civil case as well. Mm -hmm. Scared. <laughs> I don't think I want to do it now. <laughs> okay. So, any, Claire. Um, is, was a site plan submitted, one that's been based on a survey or I shows where have. the private property line is? No, I mean, even when we bought the property, there was no survey or property lines or anything like that. Because I guess I have a little bit of a concern to say, well, where, where is the property line? And, and yes. so then having that clear understanding of, of where that is just so that... I think there's probably no. somewhere <laughs> measurements well, like from the corner of the building to the property line. I'm sure that somewhere it's noted on the, the, the two records. pins that you'll find will be on the right hand side of your driveway and then up in the corner by Capitol Apartments. Okay. I, I think this is where I think we have to be careful, which is, um, you know, we're not here to adjudicate where the boundaries are. We're not situated for that, um, and we have to, you know, we're asked to approve or not approve as far as the zoning bylaws go, um, the application as proposed. Um, obviously, if she, you know, if, if we would approve a permit that um, involved going on to somebody's property that, you know, think of it, uh, I think the concerns that have been expressed are, okay, you approve this wall, but what happens if, if the excavator goes a little bit to the right? Um, my point was simply, um, you know, that's certainly a private property right about trespass, but we're not here to, uh, you know, adjudicate where, where the boundary lines are. We're just, we're I'm just here. I'm asking you to do that. I'm asking you to maintain the grade that exists there today. That's and I think that's what the applicant has, has presented, and, and that's what we're seeking to approve as a permit. And I'm just clarifying for the purposes of both you and for the other members of the board. So, uh, any other questions? Hearing none, anybody have uh, an, a motion or? Um, as much as I don't want to, w there was a question about the landscaping, I think. Mm -hmm. Oh. And then this additional information was provided with uh, some X's and... Uh, I marked down the shrubs. Yeah, and shrubs trees. and trees. Do you have a, just uh, an estimate of how many shrubs and or yes. trees exist on the property currently? So uh, 16 shrubs about, and I want to say four to seven trees. They're all kind of growing together in one spot. Are there any locations on the property that you think would be suitable for additional plantings that would uh, provide uh, shading for walkways, visual screening for the property, or any of the other criteria that are listed in the? 
landscaping yeah, I mean, section? I think um, just right up uh, at the top of the property by sort of towards the apartments, um, right along that road, we could plant some things, definitely. There's no plan for it, but we could. That was not in the, we'd be disturbing the grade. But, um. Yeah, well. <laughs> But there's other plantings in that general vicinity currently? Uh, yep, so all the things are marked on the map. All the shrubs and the trees are marked. So you're saying there, you, you hypothetically could plant additional trees and shrubs in amongst those existing trees and shrubs if you needed to? Uh, but yeah, probably just up, up towards the uh, back of the property. Where do you uh, currently have your snow uh, storage for the winter? Oh, we actually pay to remove it. So it's, it's uh, they'll come in and, and plow and then remove it at the same time? Uh, every couple of weeks, yeah. Okay. During the interim, does it store it somewhere? Uh, yep, just we push it against the Jersey barriers. Okay. And Yana, just to check in one thing, um, for the front yard area, mm -hmm. how is that impacted in the winter by the city plows with the city streets and you know Greenwood? I think that's Greenwood Terrace. Did I say that was yeah, Greenwood? Some, um, and the sidewalk plows. There's a considerable amount of snow all around the front and the side going towards the apartments in the back um, because there's a road that goes up along the property line. So again, if we planted something, um, you know, it would definitely be of snow on it. So it seemed to me in, with the photos that there's already significant plantings in the back. Mm -hmm. And so it, it wouldn't really, I, I, would it add to the aesthetics and the shading or would it just be redundant to what's there? I don't um, have a sense from the photos. I would have probably a, a person who knows about plants look at it and plant something that would help with, you know, water, something that drinks lots of water. So if, would there spa be space uh, for, for uh, two or three or four additional plantings of I shrubs? I shrubs, yes. Uh, yeah, between a tree along that, uh, is a terrace street up there, I think, right? I don't remember what it's called. A Greenwood Terrace? Greenwood Terrace, yeah. Yep. So along that road there. So if we would, in our requirement, uh, require an additional uh, four, three to four shrubs, oh, yeah. you f feel like there's yes. there's room, actual room for it? Yes. And, uh, and we'll also uh, make a requirement that any plantings be maintained yeah. in a good condition, you know, and replaced if they die and like that. Okay. Let me ask a, a question. Um, so there's been no professional erosion control plan developed. It's a small project, but, um, and this may go to Mr. Uh, Lewin's concern, which is if there was a condition of the permit that um, required you to follow the city of Montpelier's erosion control practices in the implementation of, of this wall, uh, would that be acceptable to the applicant? Are you familiar with their erosion control practices in the bylaws? I am not, what are they? So under 3008D, there's about thir 13 different erosion control practices and they include things such as limiting the site of the construction area to the minimum necessary to accommodate the proposed development, yep. preserve significant existing trees within construction area. You know, a lot of these I think are fairly standard uh, requirements. Um, monitor the site to ensure that all sediment and erosion, erosion control measures are functioning properly. Particularly important to check erosion control measures just before and after any significant rainfall. Um, 
I mean, technically, these are part of the bylaw regulations, but one way in which I think uh, would uh, might assure the neighbor that the implementation of this <laughs> followed the application more than simply uh, the representations of this is where we're putting the wall is are these erosion control measures because those seem to really go to the heart of what um, Mr. the neighbor is is concerned about and if we adopted them as a specific condition of the of the application um, I don't see it as necessarily something more than what you already have to comply with but it would be very specific that in, in lieu of an erosion control plan specific to this area you're agreeing to follow these these standards um, in your yes. implementation unless it requires some additional construction of I don't know swales or something <laughs> I mean, I, if, if it's like marking the boundaries of limits of construction, uh, uh, stabilized exposed soil, I mean, I actually think this wall would be more helpful for water issues. It'll have appropriate drainage behind it. Um, I think that it's actually an improvement. I don't foresee there being more water, um, mm -hmm. you know, more issues with water after the construction of this wall. Yeah, these only apply to, like, the construction activities themselves. Okay. They're essentially best right. practices so that when right. people are undertaking no, construction that uh, there aren't erosion problems while dirt's it. being moved around and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's, it's silt fences and sort of simple common sense things like that. Right, and, and limiting the area, particularly given the testimony that was given earlier, that there's a concern about any any digging beyond the absolute necessary area to slip the Jersey barrier in a very tight, I mean, sorry, slip the new retaining wall in where the Jersey barrier exists in a very tight area that doesn't disturb other soils. Yep, I understand. That, that makes sense. Um, Any further questions? I appreciate taking up the issues that I almost glossed over. Uh, I'll entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the application uh, Z 2018-0108 at 47 Court Street uh, for minor site plan approval as presented by the applicant, which specifically is the replacement of these barriers with a uh, new uh, stone retaining wall in the same location as the currently existing barriers uh, under the conditions that the construction activities follow the erosion and prevention sediment control practices set out in section 3008D of the zoning regulations and with the additional condition that four uh, additional shrubs be planted on the property pursuant to section 3203.G of the zoning regulations, and that the shrubs be maintained in a healthy condition with dead or dying plants being replaced within one growing season with a comparable plant um, of the same size requirements. Motion by Ryan. Second. I'll second it. Second by Deb. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of the uh, motion as stated, please raise your right hand. We have uh, all opposed? Two, three, four, five, six, six to one. We have, uh, you have your application approved. We'll issue a written decision, uh, presumably in the next two weeks. Thank you. application up is sketch plan review of a two-lot subdivision by the city of Montpelier does anybody need to take a break or can we just plow right into it are we ready okay uh, just so everyone who's here who's aware um, 
before the uh, presenter introduces himself. Uh, this is sketch plan, which means it's not evidence under oath. This is the first two steps in a subdivision process. The purpose of tonight is to really discuss any issues that uh, may arise or that we may see or that we may have further questions about for the subdivision. It's somewhat unique in that our last meeting, we also had a sort of preview of the this particular application and did very much the same thing. That was more of a general overview. This one is going to be much more focused on the issues raised um, by a subdivision application itself. So it may not go into the same, quite the same areas, but it will just look to seek uh, clarification on some of our conditions as to why or why not the parcel should be allowed to be subdivided. So Greg, if you'll introduce yourself and take it away. Thank you. Uh, my name is Greg Rabideau from Rabideau Architects in South Burlington. Um, here to present the uh, modifications to the, to the Montpelier City Garage. I don't know if it's possible to kill the lights again. Yeah. And hopefully everyone won't go to sleep <laughs> with the lights going off at this late hour. Um, this, is a, uh, this is a version of the uh, plat plan overlaid onto an aerial photograph, and it, it, it picks up on a lot of important things that are going on and around this site. But uh, the proposal before you tonight is an extension of a previous permit, and I go through this again for the benefit of folks who weren't on the board then. Um, the Capital Plaza Corporation sought and received approvals for an 84-room hotel, which is this building here, and at the time was a 220-space parking garage. And that proposal has been changed now to where the city is going to subdivide off a lot here. The property line is between the two buildings. <coughs> That roughly half acre lot will uh, will be used to construct a 348 space parking garage, which you see here now, extending down into what is the lands of uh, Mary Haney. And if you've walked the site, roughly a third of the way down the garage, there's a little bit of a drop from the Capitol Plaza parking lot to the uh, to the uh, Haney parcel. And this bunch of contours contours here. Uh, represents that. Obviously another very important feature of this map is the uh, north branch of the Winooski River and uh, here's the uh, main channel of the Winooski River. Um, this is important for the project in general as I know the city is uh, pursuing plans to develop a park right here to be called Confluence Park. And as part of that you can see uh, the trailway of the bike path and the proposed bike path bridge here existing railroad road bridges here. Um, the structure is, a, uh, is an adaptation of the earlier approved design with some major improvements. What you see here is the same view that was presented to the City Council on last Wednesday night. Um, essentially what is proposed is a four-story garage. The highest portion of that would be immediately adjacent to the Hampton Inn. Um, you can see here that on the opposite corners of the building there are also these uh, stair tower extensions. But principally the, the building line is down here. Uh, and you can see some of the design themes that are being developed as the plans are, are uh, improved. Um, the, the pattern of the building facade encompasses both masonry and stone uh, facades alternated with panels of, uh, of a um, living uh, material grown on a matrix called a green screen or a living wall. Uh, those are sort of brand specific, but what it is is it's a uh, type of trellis and what's being proposed is that uh, growing from the ground up would be um, a mixture of, of vines and ivies and other climbing plants uh, that our landscape architects estimate will, uh, will grow in over time and fill in after about three years. One other uh, distinctive feature uh, in the overall scheme of things is the creation of opportunities, as is indicated here, for some significant public art. Um, this happens to be the view of the project, uh, it's, it's sort of up in the air, but um, looking from the south and the east towards the Capitol Plaza building to the north and the west. And 
to put it in a uh, well that file died sorry I'll have to uh, have to go back and bring this up <laughs> there we go okay so this is a new view that in the previous rounds of approval were, wouldn't have been available because, uh, as this construction fencing indicates, previously there was a building in this location that's been torn down. But this gives you a, a view from Main Street, and, and obviously there's Shaw's, and here's the railroad track. So I've got my back sort of uh, against um, the building on the corner. There used to be a bank. Uh, you can see here in the distance, this is the garage. There's one of those pieces of art that I talked about. Um, there's the Capitol Dome to help orient you. And then these large masses where my cursor is going, uh, that's the existing Capitol Plaza. And this is the uh, proposed or uh, previously approved Hampton Inn. I have a different view of that. If I can go back to my. Sorry. It's it's awkward, but everyone can see then. And I hope I don't help. Oh, sorry, I just opened the same one. <laughs> Bear with me. Uh, here's a view from a little farther back. This is actually taken sort of from the edge of the of Winooski River behind that uh, Sunoco or uh, Shell Station. So here's the, uh, the area in here where Confluence Park would be, and you can see, again, the trestle bridge, the railroad bridge, and in the background you can see how this, this building, from that particular vantage point, uh, sort of fits into the landscape. So you've got these, the, the masonry panels alternating with the, uh, with the green screens, and I think, I think this is an important image to sort of show you that um, uh, this thing is not going to... Uh, have a negative or adverse impact on the looks of town from, from those key vantage points. And here again, you can see the relationship between the top of the garage here, where that uh, cornice is, and the adjacent uh, hotel, which this would be the fourth floor, and then up in the roof is the fifth floor. So the, the building is really stops uh, sort of at the fourth floor level of the adjacent garage. for a moment to the site plan. Um, well, these are the actual construction drawing elevations. They're a little, the only, uh, they're, they're a little plain to read. I think the renderings do a much better job. But this, um, this right here in the corner, I can't seem to zoom it, but uh, the, the elevations, the, the actual measurements are indicated on uh, the drawings that were included in your package. It, um, just to note, Greg, that those those aren't in this package. They aren't? Because this, this is just a subdivision, so the subdivision isn't really about the height of the new building or anything. Okay, okay. All right. I can give you my copy of what's in this actual package if you want. Um, I have I have both of them, but I, I won't dwell on the elevations. Just try to get people oriented to the project. Okay. Um, so so the, uh, the board will be asked um, at at uh, regular plat hearings uh, to to approve this subdivision of land, which would calve off about five point point five four acres of land from the Capital Plaza Corporation to the city. And then we'll also be looking for site plan approval for the garage, as well as an amendment to the previous approvals for the hotel, one to allow for off-site parking, which will be required now that we're moving the garage off to a separate property, and, and any other miscellaneous minor changes to the site plan that are a result of this change. Um, so we'll, we'll see you on a, a number of fronts, uh, site plan approval, subdivision, amendment to previous site plan approval and uh, um, any other things. 
traffic, uh, the traffic report is being updated as we speak. I know that the traffic uh, generation has been estimated to be about 88 cars during the PM peak hour, which is an increase from the, uh, the 40 some odd spaces in the original approval. Um, so far as I understand it from talking to uh, the city manager's office, uh, we're going to make plans for a second uh, egress from the garage out to the Haney lot that, that uh, operationally may not be uh, open all the time, but it's there as a sort of recommended procedure so that should anything ever happen in the primary egress, uh, we can still get people in and out of the building. Um, there's also a uh, deeded access to this little parking area here behind the uh, Overlook Partnership has a building here. Um, we have to maintain both that, that right away in some form and access to that parking. And I think there'll be a lot of discussion as we go through the permit process to talk about this bike, uh, the ADA accessible route from State Street that goes down through the project and connects to the bike path at that point. So with that overview in place, I, I guess I would offer myself up for questions from the board and see if there's any specific area you'd like me to go into. One, one area I'm interested in is the water for this uh, particular lot. In the earlier iteration, there was a talk of a water main going underneath, uh, I think coming in from off of State Street, how is that to be modified with the new design and the subdivision? Well, the uh, both in terms of water line and in terms of sanitary sewers or uh, storm sewers, uh, there's there's going to be some easements recorded that come along with this application. The plan has been there's an existing 10-inch water line that comes down through the site and currently cuts across goes underneath the uh, rectory building or the, the uh, church hall building at Christ Church and loops back to the buildings along Main Street here. Um, the intention, our work with Public Works is we're continuing to uh, design a system that will bring a water line in here and cut over to uh, Main Street and loop that water system for the rest of downtown. The exact route of that has not been presented to me, but I. I assume the goal is to get it out from underneath the church property building and into an open space to bring it down, come around this building and go over. Um, similarly, stormwater flows from, from the Capitol Plaza building and from the Hampton Inn. There's a series of uh, uh, collectors uh, that are sort of, uh, they're catch basins that, that use cyclonic forces or whatever to re remove solids that they're called for technic units is one brand name anyhow. Um, Stormwaters will, will be collected in, on, on the adjacent site, but they will continue as they have in earlier designs, route through the garage footprint and uh, end up at a head wall here associated with the bike bridge. And uh, the discharge, discharge for uh, stormwater flows will be integrated into that element. Um, so that will involve both the, the bike path project the subdivided lot we're creating for the Montpelier City Garage and the Capitol Plaza uh, project, including the New Hampton Inn. Um, there is plenty of water. Ten inches is way more than is needed for the hotels. Uh, the, the idea behind it, having this 10-inch line come through here is to maintain pressure throughout a loop system in the whole of downtown. Uh, the parking garage itself won't have any water demands other than it will have a dry sprinkler system in it and standpipes in the stairwells to serve as uh, fire, you know, fires in the garage itself. Um, and we are, we've been asked to explore by Public Works the use of uh, district heat for uh, purposes of melting snow in some locations. So that'll, that's going to be a part of one of these applications. As far as the stormwater, as far as the stormwater goes for the expansion of the the garage is there additional stormwater that's proposed for the Heaney lots that are affected or is that well there are there are existing collection systems out there some of them are going to have to get rerouted as a result of the new footprint uh, there's there's some catch basins that currently exist I think this is one of them right here um, that, that will have to get reconfigured as part of this uh, redesign of the site um, but the 
the, uh, the flows down and through this corridor are essentially the same. I mean, all of this area back here is paved. Right. 100%. Um, so the, the project site itself isn't really introducing much in the way of new stormwater catchment area. In fact, it's improving it somewhat by increasing the amount of green space in and around these buildings where it's currently parked. Um, the only stormwater that needs to be treated as urban runoff is the top deck, apparently, which will we'll have to go through a uh, one of these four technic units or some similar means of cleaning the water. And then it, the, the, all the interior drainage goes into the sanitary system. You had mentioned uh, uh, a sprinkling sprinkler system in the garage. How do you present that? How do you prevent that from freezing up during winter time? There's no water in a dry system. Uh, it's a it's a series of pipes and heads, and then uh, typically what will happen is if uh, if a fire goes off, the, the, the lines are, are maintained in a state of vacuum. I see. So if a head pops, it'll trigger a bunch of valves opening, and the water the system will flood. Uh, alternatively, the fire department can um, can charge with a pumper truck, or or uh, they'll have standpipes in each of the stairs, which is typically how they'll fight car fires. Is they'll run up the stairs with a, with a hose. Um, but dry systems are used routinely throughout Vermont. And I'm interested in knowing about uh, you're thinking about floods in the river. It's it's very uh, you know it's right up to the to uh, sort of the buffer around the river. Um, I assume that you know you've the flood the the uh, the flood folks in the planning office say that you're beyond where the risk is, or well, um, you have a plan uh, and. All of downtown is in, is in a flood hazard area. Um, the flood way uh, basically follows the river. I, I have some mapping, but I'm, I'll just... Uh, the, the, this stuff is outside of the flood way, and it's considered more of the adjacent uh, flood plain area. Um, the strategy here is for us to design this project in a way that it doesn't reduce the volume of storage capacity currently on the site. And the way we're doing that is by, by sort of flattening out this lowest level and, and dropping it down to uh, 519, I think, or 518, depending on final decisions, um, so, that, so that that volume is maintained. I see. What that means is, is essentially the basement or the lowest level of this garage is wet, fire, flood proofed, which means in a terrible flood, water could flow into the building. That's great, and it won't damage things. But it will be it would be free to flood. It would be free to flow right back out again. It's not impeded in any way. That's great. Um, and the uh, the building elevations proposed for the project um, uh, show that there are, the ground floor is largely open, with with either security grills or living wall system. And so, any of the actual systems uh, will be above that that flood grade. A any uh, any. Um, any equipment has to be above level 528. Uh, you know, with a with a hydraulic elevator, we can we can put the pump actuators either in the shaft on a that ride up and down with the cab, and then, and our fire stop would be above 528. Or we could put the if if we decide to use one that has a machine room, we can put that machine room on an upper level. The only other electrical equipment in the building, apart from the lighting, is um, would be the equipment that runs the gates and takes care of payments and stuff like that. Somewhere in this, somewhere in this footprint, we're going to build a, a small, like 80 square foot closet for a server and um, and the electric equipment that runs the, uh, uh, the the parking management equipment. We are also exploring the use or the application of solar power to the project. We've uh, started conversations with a couple of vendors to get pricing together. We we don't we know that we want to at least provide for the addition of solar power at some point in the future if it doesn't fit into the original budget. So that would mean conduits and some extra boxes and things. Um, and we are also committing to uh, providing electrical vehicles charging stations. Um, the precise number I think is is um, actually spelled out in your ordinance. Yeah. Uh, and uh, we, we were undertaking a review to see if that's if that's adequate and appropriate or if any additional ones need to be provided but we are we are working on those features as well they, they would just have to be put on upper levels to be to be flood resistant 
the um, frontage. Uh, I think you had described at the last meeting, but I I'd appreciate understanding. You know, there's a requirement of, of right. frontage, and and that was in a staff comment. Um, Luckily, we don't have any teenagers here to deride me for my poor computer skills. <laughs> um, and, uh, <coughs> I'm hoping this opens. Um, okay, it says it's working. Uh, the proposal, as it stands right now, is to uh, is to create a um, a easement and a, a right of access easement on the Capitol Plaza property. I'm sorry, it's just not opening. Let me kill that, and um, I'll have to do it this way. Um, that easement would be inscribed over this this drive that comes in from Taylor Street through the project and goes back out to state and so we would essentially be extending the frontage out to state street by by virtue of creating this this easement uh, through the site and it does show on the plat document I just am having trouble getting it open That's the plan, anyhow, is to create a, is to is to solve that by creating an easement. Uh, there's been some back and forth discussion about how wide that needs to be to meet the requirement. Um, we would prefer it to be 24 feet wide because that comports completely with the drive lanes that we have. Um, it doesn't uh, it doesn't necessarily um, uh, meet the the text of the, the ordinance, which I believe says 30 feet. Um, if, if it were wider, it just means that it would overlap parking spaces in a kind of awkward way. But other than that, really, I don't think is um, a well, if it, I mean, if it did overlap with the parking spaces, um, is no, I don't think the requirement is that it occupy. I mean, you could still have those parking spaces as long as, but I think it's the idea that it, if the city needed wider access, it would have that yeah. um, for the 30 feet. Is that something that is negotiable or, or, I mean, a possibility, or is it likely that it's going to be 24 and that's as wide as? Um, I'm sorry, Dan, can I interrupt for just a second? Because I think we're operating under some misconceptions. So the my read is that this new parcel needs to have 30 feet of frontage on a private or public road. Mm -hmm. So the 30 foot wide part only needs to be the part that's touching the parcel. Right. Right. So I just want to make sure that we understand that 30 feet aspect, I don't believe the 30 foot wide aspect needs to extend all the way to State Street. Right. But we're talking, okay. we're, we're just, talking merely touching. Yeah. Yep. I just want to um, make sure because when we're talking about having to act, cover the parking spaces further out, just because in, you know the parking right. spaces aren't right up against the building. Okay. But I'm also concerned just simply from a, a right of way access. Gotcha. Um, we were just mixing what we were talking yeah. about. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, we've we've been happy to do. We, I, our clients are happy to do it either way. But we've, from the very inception of this project, sorry, we've been we've been thinking of this as as wanting to be like and look like a street as opposed to a parking lot which is what you go into now when you go there so uh, it's been a working title for it's been hospitality way although I, I gotta believe you probably have some noteworthy Montpelier resident who 
could be memorialized with a street name, but at any rate, that the, 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 the uh, however you tell us you want it described. Right. Do we still to do it, Meredith? Do we still have the right to name streets under the DRB? Um, I believe that Audra needs to check and see what's available. Okay. The old, well, I mean, the old bylaws used to give this board the I, power. I think the board still has, still has at, at least some of it. I, I, I honestly, this will be the first time I've dug into that too much. Okay. The first time it's come up Let's since go crazy. I've been here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and veto Dan Richardson Drive right now. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Okay. Um, any other questions from any other board members? Any issues? I don't know no fun. You're going to need a boundary line adjustment on the Heaney lot, or how's that going to work? Because this is going to extend over into this other lot, and this, prop this lot that's being proposed isn't big enough to fit the building, correct? Well, well both the, the, the lands of Heaney and the, uh, um, the, the lot that's getting calved off by the uh, um, Capital Plaza Corporation, uh, both will be involved lands. The uh, Haney lot is only subject to a long-term lease. So the directions we've been getting from other parts of the city government have been that, uh, is that, is that we wouldn't change the shape of the Haney lot or anything like that. We're frankly looking for folks on your side of the table to tell us just how that needs to be structured. But we weren't planning on further subdividing the Haney lot in any way. I think your client was raising his hand. Oh. Please do. Because it is a confusing part. Bill Fraser, city manager. Uh, the city has a 49 year lease on that parcel, which is pushing the boundary of the expected life of the garage. So we are in. We've reached an agreement with the Heaney, and, and the lease allows us to construct a building on their, their uh, property with their permission, they've granted permission. We're creating an addendum to that lease, which would call for what happens, so we would provide either option that the city could purchase the property at the end of 49 years, the Heaney's could purchase interest in the garage at the end of 49 years, or we could agree to take it down. So those would be the three logical options. But, um, we, would have, we have control of that property for, I think, 48 years. That's the current plan. Meredith, is there any concern about a building straddling a property line as far as setbacks or? Um, there's zero setbacks in this particular district. So with the setback issue, there's none. Um, and when we get to this issue, when we get to site plan, we have uh, multiple legal opinions dealing with this issue. Okay. I mean, yeah, at this point, I guess we're just looking at lot two. Um, yeah. It's, I just, I don't have those in front of me because yeah, yeah. it's not this application. Perfect, no, thank you. <laughs> okay. So uh, I know that there are members of the public. I don't know if anyone had any comments or questions that they wish to come up. If you just come up to a microphone, introduce yourself. I'm Sa Sandy Vitz -Toom. Is it working? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's mostly for the recording. Yeah. And um, I am part of the group called the Montpelier Heritage Group. Our purpose is to uh, preserve, protect, and advance the sense of place in Montpelier, and that can include streetscapes, uh, actual buildings, historic preservation, and all of the other parts of uh, the vitality of the, think of the sense of place. Um, we are really glad that the city has been so carefully following and reviewing uh, the, the, the development so far. Um, it's a, this is a huge investment in the city, right in a key part of the city. We remain concerned that um, uh, there may not, in the, in the effort to keep this going, that there may not be a really thorough review of um, a lot of details and um, of things like the streetscape. I was so happy to see that um, you're beginning to develop perspectives. I had some concerns when I looked at them about relative elevations. Um, they used to float balloons to actually make sure that things were accurate. Mm -hmm. 
as a way to prove that the perspective rendering is, is correct. Um, and it's hard to compare a, an occupied building like the plaza with a parking garage. So it would be, it might be really useful to have balloons or something because you know the floor to floor is different. Um, but I know before, tonight you're actually speaking about the subdivision, and I have a couple of very innocent questions because I, I didn't know. I just sort of, in general, curious about the subdivision. Um, I think the zoning ordinance uh, kind of discourages people from making non-conforming lots, right? Mm -hmm. So what this would accomplish being a conforming lot? As, I mean, some of the issues that we're raising, and Meredith, if you want to. Yeah, I mean, the the big issue about whether or not this would be a conforming law is the frontage. Yep. The frontage needs to be ironed out. Well, and the other thing is, I'm just thinking about the parking garages that I've been to, um, the ones that are easier to use and the ones that are scarier to use. And it seems to me that they work well when they're on a street. And I was trying to think in my mind, what is a street? A street is it has something that has kind of people going both ways. It has a destination at both ends as opposed to an alley. And alleys uh, can be a little bit scary. And also be harder for people to find their way through if they're new to town, like people visiting a hotel. So I'm confused. Um, and maybe this actually might be the best drawing to, to explain my, or help me fix my confusion, which is, is is this the road is then L shape is, is the quote street and that then, dark shaded area is the proposed and you're access. forming the corner because there's no way to get through to the Heaney lot to make it a through street not uh, but because the Christ Church Episcopal owns yeah all that land to the east yeah. of that point okay oh you can't reduce the usable footprint of the you can't make cars smaller so that the garage can get narrower got you Okay, so that is, there. there is technically a way through. Um, are you gonna be changing the way the parking layout? Because I, I cut through that way sometimes with my little tiny Subaru, and it's kind of hairy driving just that, that path that you have now. Oh, there, the, the, through the, uh, the, the roadway? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm guessing that the new hospitality street hmm. will be a little wider and more street-like than you know, the back way through the Capitol's parking lot? So, several things will be happening. Uh, one is that the finished grade will, will be less of a roller coaster. We're gonna smooth that out so that it's a, it's a more continuous grade and not, uh, there's some big dips in there. Uh, but there'll also be sidewalks and trees and, and uh, curbs. Um, so it'll, it'll feel a lot more defined as a road as opposed to now, which is it's one, one continuous surface of pavement with different kinds of striping on it. And so. for instance, from your new garage to State Street, which comes out, I think, by the post office, yes. will that be more like a street with parallel parking or? Well, I mean, we're, how con we're showing, we're continuing to show the perpendicular parking mm -hmm. here. Um, some of that is necessary to serve the commercial tenants in the Capitol Plaza building, the bank, you know, most notably, but there's hair salon and a barber shop and uh, the state has office space in there so um, uh, those will stay as uh, with with perpendicular parking but yeah in terms of it being street like you know we're, that's our goal is to have curbs and sidewalks and we've got a continuous accessible route that comes down along the side of that and, and to the garage and to the hotel building so um, we have been working on that connectivity when we get to site plan review I think we'll happy to talk about that in detail. Do you have a pedestrian way either on your property or along to, because now a lot of people get from the ATM over to the farmer's market. Maybe the farmer's market's going. Down through but here. Yeah, there, right now there's a pedestrian walkway through there. There's, there's roughly eight, eight feet on the north side of the parking garage to the property line. Eight feet, okay. And so there's plenty of room to put a sidewalk in there. A normal, normally accessible route would be five feet wide. Um, that's something I would want to talk to the folks at the church about in terms of, you know, how they envision this all coming together because there's a, po I don't know, there's a possibility that when they build onto the back of the church to put an apartment in, they may not want that feature for some reason, I don't know. It's just, I think, with a sense of place, yeah. um, developing a really successful grid for both cars, pedestrians, bicycles, um, that 
is rich rather than you know a, a bunch of dead ends. Yeah, and I don't want to resist any of that. I, I'm only looking out for there's another property that owner involved. So uh, that's the only reason I'm hedging. So, Greg, actually, this raises some questions. Um, where the where the proposed right of ways come out at State Street and Taylor Street. Right now, these are almost like driveway entrances. Is the proposal that those would be more street-like in that they would be more uh, almost like an intersection where the, the road would not be going essentially off of a sidewalk ramp, um, but would, would meet State Street or Taylor Street on its same grade? And have crosswalks and, and have crosswalks. crosswalks. Um, no one's asked that question before. I, I, yeah, we we were planning on you know, especially at Taylor Street, that intersection gets a lot of rework because the city's already started their project to, to dress Taylor Street up, and so there's there's going to be improvements at that intersection. Mm -hmm. um, none of the documentation I've shown so far has has shown that relationship changing. I would have to talk to our civil engineers about. Okay. On how that is and why. Uh, the only thing I know for sure is we, we would want to make sure that stormwater flows running down the curbs of State Street didn't come down into the project site because there's a drop of grade down through there. Right. And I assume you're doing some sorts of traffic studies because this really changes the traffic pattern coming back out onto State Street, which is already challenging. Back yeah, I, I, I had good fun getting into town tonight. I understand what Montpelier is like at 5 o'clock, but um, a traffic study is being done. Um, uh, you know, a lot of the traffic that's coming out on the street, I mean, right now there's 208 spaces of parking on, on the Capitol Plaza lot. Plus the folks like Sandy and I who cut through the back, <laughs> right, to, you know, to come around. Yeah. Um, sorry. Um, yeah, but those are those are valid questions that we, we should resolve. And, and on the along the um, the right of way that heads up from the north from the parking deck towards State Street on the right on the right side the east side, if those parking spaces are reserved, is there a plan for pedestrian circulation for them to essentially cross over towards? Because most people that would park along where your arrow is and up. You know, would be using the Capitol Plaza or similar facilities. Um, there's two. There's two questions there: whether or not these are reserved spaces, and I, I think I might have to defer to Sue and Bill on that because uh, the city's been talking about. Are you, I have an answer. Sure. Are you talking about the spaces in the Heaney lot or the? No, no. Oh, right where his right where his cursor is along. So those spaces. Well, I think some of them are Northfield Savings Bank. We have to look at the ownership of, uh, I know the church is in. One of the options that we're actually pursuing is that those would become city streets. Mm -hmm. We just didn't think we'd be able to have that all done in time for this process, so we decided to go for the deeded right away for, to get this. So at some point, those may all become entirely city streets, which case we'd have more. That, that's really our long-term preference, but for now, this is where, where we're at. Right, okay. So, well, I mean, exactly. obviously, answer about reserves. no, but, uh, you know, as long as those those spots do remain, uh, uh, you know, because we're changing the nature of that from really um, a driveway entrance exit slash cut through um, in into what's going to be a main ingress egress for a substantial parking deck. Um, whether there would be a, any type of either crosswalk or other type yeah. of... So I agree with Greg. We hadn't really talked specifically about the crosswalk at State Street. That if it mm -hmm. becomes a street, that makes perfect sense. I don't know why we wouldn't do that. It's just a signal that that's what it is. And I think, you know, to, to the Greg's credit there, the, its current function is to provide is access to parking. Right. And with a very kind of meandering route through. So... Uh, while there will be more parking, there will also be a better defined route and you know more parking and more organized in and out of that parking. One of the things that he mentioned earlier too is the idea that of an exit from the garage onto um, the Heaney lot, yes. 60 State Street. Um, we're, we're looking at that both ways, either as a regular exit with the exception, say, of Saturday mornings when the 
farmer's market was using that portion uh, and closing it then or as only an emergency so that you know also could help disperse the traffic a little bit thanks Thank you. any other questions from the board at this time is there Steve did you wish to come up to the mic then Stephen Whitaker, Montpelier. Uh, I have spent a lot of time studying the different iterations. They keep changing. Uh, I'm going to have a little bit of a challenge to keep narrow within, but they've strayed outside of the site plan or subdivision as well. Uh, the setback from the north branch is going to be a fundamental uh, defining characteristic that bank is ambiguous at best right now the top of the bank and the bottom of the bank are some 8 to 12 feet of difference uh, so the distance from the corner of the garage uh, right there yep right there to the, so, the so right river here. is I stepped it off at about 19 feet but you're, you know you're trying to move a, a very heavy garage so um, I think you're, the design development review board is going to need to require a clear marking survey quality uh, aqua, aqua engineer, water engineer to define what's the riparian boundary there. Um, traffic, I believe, is going to be the Achilles heel of this uh, because you keep hearing different things. You keep hearing a traffic study, a traffic report, a trip generation analysis. When you're talking 348 cars plus the surface lot parking, all those perpendicular spots that are remaining and the church spaces, this is a ripe to be a traffic nightmare. Not only within the lot, the two uh, easements as you're calling them, uh, but where they enter Taylor and State as well. I s predict that if this garage does go through in this location, which I object for with good foundation, you're going to end up needing to take the Haney lot possibly by any eminent domain and turn that into a full street with a stoplight out of down. Because the number of times that these spots cycle from previous parking studies which the city has conducted during the day multiplied by the number of spaces in it multiplied by the other congesting traffic perpendicular in most cases is going to be a royal nightmare and yet the city is acting as the developer here and not no longer the regulator and so the typical due diligence that and skepticism that would be applied by uh, officials, employees of the city uh, may not be brought to bear and it may fall inordinately to this development review board to investigate those. Um, I want to quote one line from 3505 where the purpose of the district is to maintain compact and walkable, emphasis on walkable, and then little I I paren two to connect to and extend existing street sidewalk path trail utility greenways and open space corridors to the maximum extent feasible so this runs directly contrary to that in that coming down through the Haney lot there's talk of allowing a bike to get through and get around to the ent rear entrance of the garage through a little ramp uh, where we just described coming down through the Haney lot surrounding that back corner of the garage and a bicycle storage rack or get into the garage there. There is so far no plan to connect that bike pedestrian access to the new bike path bridge uh, and, and walkway that extends across Confluence Park and continues on to intersect with the others. Uh, that has varying causes I think security of the garage is one but there's a retaining wall there that's not represented as showing a rail that kind of creates a moat type atmosphere environment in, in a flood situation um, 
the, the, how those trails and that traffic flow, the Confluence Park is really going to be meaningless if it's hidden behind this garage and inaccessible. If you have to go through a 50-foot urban canyon that's only 10 feet wide between the hotel and the parking garage, and then turn southeast and go down and cross the at the bike path to get to that teeny little postage stamp park, nobody's going to bother. There's not going to be any more view of the city superior court building, capitol, city hall, all, any of our church steeples. All those views will be blocked from that. Uh, Confluence Park. Um, I'm just throwing a lot of cautions and I've written some of them in a kind of a imaginary walking tour of how this would create so many obstacles. I, I really think that we need to be very rigorously skeptical and challenge uh, every piece of this location. This location is set by default by a prior permitted project that couldn't get insured and then shifted to city ownership. So there may be an attempt to bypass development review board approval due to it being a city owned project. So I, I just want to caution you that the, this is very high stakes, 40 year, $16 million with interest. Uh, the Stormwater wastewater treatment is not accounted for, both either for location, uh, brake dust, rubber, filtration, any of that, uh, those systems are, are not, the green wall costs were not factored into the payback estimates for the, so, but we're getting into next week's, uh, or two weeks from now. Um, you heard that 100% of this parcel is paved. That's not true because you saw the contours. There's a good, a section of uh, that gray section in the middle of the garage, that's uh, absorbent dirt and grass at present because I scamper up and over at it, you know, during the farmer's market. Um, you saw an elevation model of a, that showed the garage well below the railroad bridge. The railroad bridge is at about 30 feet elevation, uh, the top of the railroad bridge. And this is going to be 50 something feet. So how the garage appeared lower than the railroad trestle is, is quite baffling, uh, unless the... Right. I, I, I think the board made a, a comment about that as well with the balloons that it's often, All right. pers yeah. you I know, I trust perspective. Well, I, I mean, it's, it, it's, a, it's a point well taken that sometimes when you look at this kind of perspective, it, it does have that appearance but we don't know what it looks like and the balloons you know and you know steve from cell tower cases the the balloons are often the best way of determining the the actual height as it appears in fact there's a couple of weights uh sitting there that nobody unused behind the uh, video console that could anchor those balloons so i'm happy to cooperate on putting those up and measuring and verifying the proper length of cable i mean i i, I don't think anyone would stop you from flying uh, restrooms uh it's going to need to be further it's going to be a wastewater treatment because whatever gets left gifted in the garage ends up in the wastewater in the stormwater and there are no public restrooms within reach of this and that's what most of these garages end up smelling like um i think most of the rest can wait and i will provide you with uh some written stuff that will help prompt your questions and refine your questions for next uh, hearing. Thank you. Um, I would ask you, I did read that you can require a traffic study. I believe you're going to get less than a full traffic analysis, especially based on the parking anomalies, the perpendicular parking anomalies that surround this whole project, and that you're going to need to insist on uh, a full traffic analysis because if this is going to end up requiring a full street and or new traffic signals uh, that's going to fundamentally change the character of Montpelier as a pedestrian and walkable city. Thanks. Thank Any other questions from the board? Can I just say? Yeah. Uh, if everyone who spoke tonight can please make sure to put their addresses down on that form sign-in sheet. I'd appreciate it. Thank you. 
and, the, and that's for mailing purposes, is that right? Yeah, that's for mailing purposes. Okay. Claire. Um, permitting an Act 250, so this is being developed separate from the hotel, but when the hotel gets Act 250, is this part of the Act 250 application? The, the guidance we've had from the district coordinator is that they want to see one application covering all of it. We would have preferred to come in with two separate applications, but nonetheless, uh, it's our hope that the project will be reviewed under Board Rule 6068B, uh, which is sometimes called the off-ramp. We're collecting uh, findings from various state departments right now. Uh, that, that several of them are enumerated in the rule. Uh, but we hope to uh, perfect an application for uh, to the District 5 Commission to have findings on this that, uh, that a permit's not required as part of a designated downtown. On the, on the parking garage? On the whole thing. Oh, the whole, oh, okay. On the whole thing. And like I said, we would have rather processed two separate applications. Um, we got, a, we got a jurisdictional opinion from the district coordinator that a, the hotel room is a dwelling unit, and so there's more than 10 rooms. It would have to have a permit. The uh, city's parking garage, absent anything else, shouldn't really require one because municipal facilities are exempt. Um, but uh, they're seeing it all working together. And so I, th I think the, the minimal process laid out in front of us is, is more than adequate. So much of the Act 250 criteria don't apply uh, in an urban lot. You know, there's not an issue of forestry or prime ag soils. Or, so we're getting the letters and sign-offs on that, and, and hopefully that will be processed sort of on, on a parallel track with this set of applications. Great. Any other questions? Yeah, Rob. Yeah. Um, so there's been some discussion about the river setback. I was just wondering if that was something uh, that if you had a draft survey plat, the next meeting that that line was going to be shown and determined, or have you already? The, the drawings on Civil Engineering Associates title block, including this one, are the result of a very detailed survey undertaken by them. So, so they, I mean, we can bring the worksheets, but the, uh, t the, the top of bank was defined as this first dotted line here. This parallel line to it, this heavy dotted line yep. here, is the 20-foot setback required in this district. Okay. And according to your rules, uh, roughly 50% yep. of that can be covered up. Um, the, uh, the only part of the river frontage that really belongs to the projects down here, <laughs> uh, because there's a property corner there and all of this belongs to Overlook Partners. Um, but I'm I'm supremely confident that our surveyors have adequately no, identified sure. the location of that top of bank. Absolutely. Okay. Great. Okay. Unless there's any other questions or concerns, I think this will conclude site plan or sketch plan. Uh, sorry, long night. Sketch plan review for the uh, city of Montpelier's uh, parking garage project at 100 State Street. And given the new bylaws, we don't have to actually make any motions or review anything to determine. The next step, of course, would be the, um, the actual site plan and final, final plat review for the subdivision. Yes. So thank you all. Thank you for your time, everyone. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, the other business for this evening, the next regularly scheduled meeting is Monday, October 15th, 2018, 7 p.m., same time, same channel. Okay. Um, and probably same applicants. Um, <laughs> any other new business? Uh, yes, uh, it's this is a question for Meredith. Meredith, um, draft findings that are filed my understanding was they would be circulated among the board members before being finalized. Am I, am I, am I okay. correct in this? So it's something that we have done, I think, when we have had decisions where we there were questions on how, how they were dealt right. with. Well, we, we, we're, you we, we weren't necessarily going to do it with all of them because it, or it wasn't necessarily something that was discussed where we were going to do that with all of them. Well, with regards to deliberative session, 
-hmm. This is what I'm talking about. Right. And, I, and I don't believe that we've seen those draft decisions circulated among the membership. So. Okay. And I'm asking yep, and that they be circulated. Okay. Sure. I mean, there's, um, so I think we were going under the understanding that, as in past practices, that if the board had decided a certain direction, that uh, the chair and staff would draft it up and I'd sign it. Um, and so we haven't been circulating those. So that um, would be. So, there, so for example, the school. The school. Um, issued did you issue it Friday no I haven't had a chance okay. to I was I was working outside okay. of normal well, hours then we Friday, can, so we then can we still can, share that we one can still share that one I, I don't I don't want to make this a, a additional burden but I do think it's important that's fine to, to solicit the board's uh, input and if you don't have a comment you don't have to respond you can just make the assumption that um, you know, 24 hours to review or whatever well, is a reasonable period of time okay so yeah, I I'll, I'll either give a set time to review. Yep, I think that's perfectly legitimate. Okay. But I do think it's important that the board have a chance to do a walkthrough with uh, the draft. I think that makes sense for the deliberative session. Yes. Um, I'm not talking about every. Okay. Right. For example, like the decisions that we issued tonight, essentially Meredith will help draft. I may do a final review and then sign and. I really am those. focusing on the deliberative okay. session. Okay. Yep. And in, in, you know, as, I've, as you've seen in what we've circulated one, two others, that really the, the staff report as much as possible is the first draft. So, it is. Okay. And you do a great job on those. I want to acknowledge that. <laughs> Thanks. Okay. I have so a question that maybe is follows up on that. And, and I'm just curious on how Montpelier does it because I know it's, it works differently in different towns. When, when the decision is made here, is that when you consider the date of the decision, or this is the decision of it is when you sign it? Because I think I've, I've heard there could be a bit, a bit of a tricky, you know, when did you verbally approve it versus when do you actually sign it to when it's actually approved for the 30 days. And I was curious on how you handle that. Yeah, so, so the decision in here triggers the 45 day window for the decision. Decision for a decision to issue yeah, for a decision for to issue. Uh, deemed approved purposes and then the actual written decision is the trigger for the 30-day appeal period when that decision is signed the signature okay. date so on the written decision is the beginning of the appeal period okay so when so when they leave I just wanted to make sure that when they leave here and they're verbally hearing you're approved they're not thinking oh that starts my 30 days like that 30 days yeah. doesn't start until they actually get the paper in their hands. There's a, there's a gap. And that's why we had the clarification for the first application, that they need to wait for the permit. Mm -hmm. And that, that lays out clearly for them yeah. when they're, when, there, there's a date on there that says when the appeal period is over. Okay. Any other? I'll take a motion to adjourn. Motion by Kevin. Seconded. Seconded by Tom. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. We are adjourned.